Under this cover is General Motors' new ZH2. It's a hydrogen-powered fuel cell truck that they built in conjunction with the U.S. Army to test to see how an off-road vehicle will work that's powered by hydrogen and a fuel cell. But before we pull the covers off the ZH2, I think we should talk about how hydrogen powers a car and how it works as an off-road, perhaps the ultimate off-road vehicle, because this could be the next Humvee. And that is coming up right now in the fast lane truck. And don't worry, we'll show you the truck. So I'm here in Washington at the AUSA show, the Association of the United States Army. And basically this is a show where a lot of defense contractors come to show off their wares, like behind me. Yeah, that's an Oshkosh military truck. And the cool thing about this show is that I'm here, of course, checking out what GM's doing, but this show has a lot of military and defense contractors, and there are a lot of militaries here, I think, looking around to see what is new and what they can purchase for their own military. And I'm, of course, a truck and car guy, so I'm always interested in trucks and cars, and there's a lot of them here. There's a lot of, uh, well, there's a lot of ballistics here as well, but look at this thing. This is... Uh, I don't know what it is. It looks like uh, ATV. Let me show you. It looks like the ultimate ATV. Um, if you needed something that had a little bit more tactical capability than your average uh, Polaris Razor, uh, this might be the vehicle. Uh, it's pretty, pretty badass looking. <laughs> it is. It is pretty badass. Like, it's like the ultimate ATV. <laughs> are you are you with this? Yes. What's yes. your name? Ed Soriano. Hey, Ed, I'm Roman. I'm with the Fast Lane Truck. Tell me about this bad boy. Well, this is the Army's uh, contrib This is Northrop Grumman's contribution for the light reconnaissance vehicle requirement for the for the Army. Okay. For the, so the, the ultimate ATV. The ultimate ATV. It's got uh, capabilities that uh, are pretty unique. Yeah. Has a, a, the a 25 millimeter. It's, uh, we've got an energy component of this thing that uh, will generate enough energy uh, to run a laser system on top. Yeah. And uh, it's. Uh, it's for the reconnaissance squadron for the for the army. Okay, so. let me get your name here. Yeah, so I get, I get that right. <laughs> okay. Uh, and is this actually going into production, or is it something you're just showing here? No. What? Well, we uh, we we want the army to buy it. Okay, obviously. so you're trying to sell it to the army. We're trying to sell it to the army. Absolutely. Yeah. Hi, I'm Roman. Hi. Nice to meet you, Samantha. Nice to meet you, Samantha Corey. Video. I'm Roman with the fast lane. Can we turn that off just for one second? Heck yeah. Thank you. Okay, maybe I got a little sidetracked with all the new military the hardware, but the reason I'm in Washington is for this. Yes, the unveiling of the new Chevy Colorado ZH2. So somewhere back there in this uh, media scrum behind all the brass, literally, the uh, Army brass is the new truck. And uh, I had a chance to go inside of it before everybody jumped in, and I was surprised at just how normal it is on the inside. It even has a tow haul mode and I like the regular, well let me show you. So I'm in the ZH2 and uh, it's pretty much a Colorado in here except of course for the uh, Recaro seats and the uh, four-point harnesses. Uh, otherwise uh, you're missing one seat in the back. Let me show you. You've got uh, Recaro's back there with better harnesses, but uh, otherwise it's uh, standard Colorado in here. You've got the Chevy logo, uh, you've got uh, cruise control, but you even have uh, Sirius uh, XM radio if you wanted it to. And then over here, this is interesting, you've got a, both a front and a back locker, and the Colorado doesn't, of course, have the, let me show you, the Colorado doesn't have the uh, front locking diff, but apparently, uh, the Colorado ZH2, if I'm going by these controls, has a, a front locking diff, uh, tow haul mode, front locking diff, rear locking diff, turn the trash control, and a light. So I don't know how many of these uh, buttons are actually functional, but uh, they look like they're uh, they're ready to be used. So I guess the military is going to have. Yeah, roll around. I guess the military is going to have. Uh, a pretty road-ready, uh, hydrogen-powered uh, fuel cell vehicle ready to go, and uh, love to get behind the wheel of this and see how it actually does off-road. So 
So this is actually the fuel cell that's powering the ZH2, and it's pretty big. It's the first generation, or generation zero, uh, and they put it in here because they've done a lot of durability testing with it, over three million miles. Right here, that's the second generation fuel cell, and there's actually a third one, but you know what? I talked to the guy in charge of uh, GM's advanced technology program, so let's cut to that interview so you can learn a little bit more about what fuel cell do and how they power the ZH2. GM was basically trying to evaluate fuel cell technology and all the advantages that it can offer as an electric drive system and it made sense to try to explore that in the space of an off-road vehicle which a Colorado is a very capable off-road platform so we use that as as the architecture that we integrated fuel cell technology with and we get all the advantages of the efficiency and the zero emissions zero petroleum capability that come out of a fuel cell but you also bring some interesting capability where you get very wide speed range where you have very high torque on the wheel. All right guys, here you have a cutaway of the ZH2 and you can see that the fuel cells in the front, over here uh, the electric motor, there's also of course a battery to regenerate power when the truck is coasting or going downhill and over here are three hydrogen tanks. Now the technology behind these hydrogen tanks is actually very interesting because when you think about it, uh, you don't want bullets penetrating those because potentially you could have a bomb on board the truck. And GM actually shot a 50 caliber bullet into these hydrogen tanks to make sure that they are safe. And here we are standing by the hydrogen tank. Uh, I noticed that it's, you know, it's substantial. Why is that so substantial? It is. Um, you know, the system is designed around 700 bar or 10,000 PSI, you know, so obviously that's quite a bit of pressure. Um, so to be able to withstand that, um, General Motors partnered with Quantum to develop these tanks. Um, it is a carbon fiber material. Um, this you can, is the carbon fiber right there. Correct. Yeah, you can kind of see multiple layers of it. Uh, I don't know exactly how many layers they have used. Um, but the tanks are extremely strong. Um, General Motors has done quite a bit of testing with them. Um, impact testing, drop testing, um, they've done some ballistic testing. Um, we plan on doing additional ballistic testing with the military. Um, our library of uh, penetrators and rounds is a little more extensive than theirs. Um, so we'll test it everything from small caliber up to large caliber and um, to, to point of failure. Yeah, you, you obviously don't want to be driving around with a potential bomb strapped to the back of the vehicle. Absolutely. It's, it's kind of a misconception about hydrogen. You know, there, it's, it's much different than liquid fuels. You know, liquid fuels, if you penetrate the tank in any type of, you know, um, large event, um, it can pool. Um, you know, obviously gasoline fumes are very flammable, whereas hydrogen, it diffuses very rapidly into the atmosphere. Um, so there are some benefits and advantages to hydrogen compared to a traditional liquid fuel. This is the, the nozzle. fueling nozzle for hydrogen. Um, it looks very similar to, a, you know, your traditional gas. There actually is a, a data link between the refueling station and the nozzle and the vehicle itself, so they kind of communicate two ways with each other. Um, there are hydrogen sensors exterior to it to make sure that there is, is a, a good seal and a good leak. Um, refueling time is about three minutes, so very comparable to a liquid fuel type system. Um, and as you can see, you know, it's your traditional type of uh, Doesn't take any nozzle. expertise. No, absolutely not. Um, it's very simple to operate, uh, which is another benefit of it. Um, it's much faster than electric recharging, uh, so it's kind of a benefit. In the military, they, they really like the idea of off-road mobility. I mean, getting off of the road so they're not predictable where they go, that's a good thing. Yep. And, and so that, from their ability to defend and, and avoid uh, conflict, that's a, that's a great thing. So that's the same kind of thing that we want for an off-road vehicle in terms of its off-road capability. But if you think about electric drive, I mean, when the first electric drives came out and they were out in these you know, parking lots, we had to worry about pedestrians not hearing the vehicle as it very snuck quiet. up on them. They're very quiet. And so that's actually a very desirable thing for the military. They don't want to be detected. So a vehicle that can go out and operate in a very stealthy way because it's quiet operating, that's a good thing. But it's also a good thing if you think about it because sometimes they just want to stop and not be detected. They don't want a lot of heat. They don't want exhaust smell. They don't want smoke. They don't want all those things. A fuel cell has none of it. A fuel cell has no smoke other than some water vapor, no odor, um, we're very quiet and the fact that we have this highly capable electric drive system, we can also take advantage of its ability to export power. So we become a mobile generator. The other cool feature that makes the ZH2 perhaps the ultimate off-road truck is right here. It's a power takeoff. The ZH2 can use the fuel cell to actually power the truck, move it, or when stationary, it can generate electricity, and that's something that certainly the Army is interested in because the Army has a lot of need for a lot of components that they can potentially stick on this truck. Think defense, think mobile hospital. 
because there's a lot of things you can do when you can generate power and do that without generating a big heat signature. Yes, the fuel cell does put out a lot of heat, but nothing compared to what a diesel engine would do. 25 kilowatts of ge continuous generation uh, capability or 50 kilowatts of peak, and that's a good thing from a military application as well. Well, there it is. There's the uh, fuel cell. It's pretty big. It's the first gen, basically, gen zero. Now, what are the advantages of a fuel cell vehicle, an electric vehicle? Well, first and foremost, it's very quiet, unlike a diesel engine. It can generate electricity, and best of all, it doesn't produce a lot of smoke, if any. In fact, the only thing that comes out of the tailpipe is water, and GM says that they can produce about uh, two gallons of water per hour. And I know besides fuel, the military also moves a lot of water, and you guys generate water. How much water do you generate? About two gallons an hour if we want. So that's another nice thing, because water and fuel are the two things that the military needs to worry about. Um, you know, if I'm an off-road uh, enthusiast and I want to camp, water is kind of an interesting thing, but it's really important to the military because they can't do without it, and they have to take it with them, and that's expensive. So making water in the field is a good thing. But as you can see right here, where the exhaust pipes are, right now it's not set up to actually um, reuse the water that comes out of the fuel cell. It just uh, drips out of the bottom of the truck. For all of you guys who have the Colorado, it's actually cool to know that you can stuff 37s and real beadlocks under the fender. Of course, GM has changed the suspension. It's given this truck a lot more ground clearance, 14 inches. That's almost double what the regular Colorado has. And of course, the approach to departure angles are a lot, well, a lot more off-road worthy. Remember that little front air dam that GM puts on their Colorado? Notice it's conspicuous in its absence on the ZH2. We're putting 37-inch tires on it, uh, that gives big. it that's big. So it gives us a lot of ability from approach and departure angles and the breakover angle, all the all the things that you really want for off-road mobility. This vehicle kind of accentuates all of that, and then it leverages that fuel cell technology so that we can get a very good dynamic running vehicle that does all of these things that I talked to you about. Efficient, it refuels in about three minutes. You can get, um, I mean, this vehicle is actually not going to have the full range capability. It's going to have closer to 200 miles range, but you can have a 300, 400 mile range vehicle with a fuel cell uh, by putting hydrogen on board. So that's one of the nice advantages. Yeah, talk to me about kind of how the military's needs and the off-road world uh, mesh in this vehicle. Yeah, so, I mean, the military, they, they really like the idea of off-road mobility. I mean, getting off of the road so they're not predictable where they go, that's a good thing. Yep. And and so that, from their ability to defend and, and avoid uh, conflict, that's a, that's a great thing. Here you can see some of the truck's capabilities, 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds, 0 to 30 in 4.6, turning radius 24.2 it's not exactly fast uh, but then again uh, this is a test mule and then of course if you look over here you've got the curb weight 6038 pounds uh, basically it's a standard Colorado chassis somewhere between the short and the long cab uh, and you can see the departure and uh, approach angles uh, they're really good front overhang 35 inches rear overhang 42 uh, and then of course the power is 25 kilowatts um, and then if we go down here you can kind of see the evolution of GM's fuel cells. They've been doing it a while. And fuel cells have been around a long time. In fact, we went to the moon with fuel cells, but they were massive and expensive uh, and really not ready for prime time. Going into the fuel cell is oxygen from air and hydrogen that's stored on board the vehicle. And um, the two come together into the fuel cell stack there's, this is the stack here, about 300 cells, and then around the stack is what we call the balance of plant. There's a compressor, injector, power electronics, humidifier, all devices that assist in delivering a combination of the hydrogen and the oxygen to the stack where there's an electrochemical reaction that pro produces electric power which in turn powers the vehicle or drives the vehicle down the road. So that's at a very high level, that's how a, a fuel cell system or fuel cell engine works to power an automobile or power other devices as well. So obviously we know um, a fuel cell can power a car, yep. but what we don't know is how well it powers an off-road vehicle, right? So how does it work when it's being shaken up, and how does it work at different altitudes? Is this what you're trying to figure out? Well, that's one of the things we'll watch with yeah. the vehicle. Um, right now, the, the, we've had great success with the fuel cells. Uh, we've had them on the road in, in more 
more classical ways of a road vehicle um, for well ever since uh, 2007 and we've really been able to generate a lot of mileage over 3.1 million miles on a fleet of vehicles so we know how it behaves in those environments this is going to give us another look at, at uh, you know another different environment where it's off-road and, and it is getting jostled around but if you think about it um, there are many things about a fuel cell that are very attractive in those environments so uh, you know one thing that you have to worry about when you're talking about true aggressive off-road capability is the ability to operate on an incline you have to worry about what happens to the oil in an engine well we don't have those problems with the fuel cell a fuel cell can operate on almost any angle and my hydrogen storage is in a contained tank and it, it can operate that way regardless of what angle the vehicle's on the biggest question with fuel cell technology isn't necessarily the fuel cell I mean you can see how it's gone from huge to smaller to much smaller the question is the infrastructure and that's something the army is also worried about and then we have to take a look at it from a business case perspective and say what makes sense on the future battlefield uh, and how far can this penetrate into commercial app or a military I'm sorry military applications so uh, we really have to take a look at it from a dollars and cents perspective and then also the risk and safety of our warfighters and all that will be brought together to show us what the true potential of this powertrain is. But right now we're very excited for the obvious reasons of silent mobility, water generation, onboard power, and the high-end torque. And if you, if, you, if you find that fuel cells are actually um, logistically doable for the military, will there be an RFP procedure then that will happen, or what would be the next step? Yeah, absolutely. I think you know we're, we're early into the exploration of this. Uh, and uh, I anticipate, you know, we will go through this year, we will learn a lot. Uh, hopefully, if it still shows a great deal of promise, we will probably cycle through this process one more time to look at enhancing some of the performance attributes. Uh, General Motors right now, the powertrain we have in here is actually larger than what their state of the art is for their commercial application. So there's an opportunity to even downsize the powertrain even further for the same energy output. All right, full disclosure, GM flew me out here to Washington to attend this conference. They put me up in a snazzy hotel, they fed me a great meal, and they gave me access to this truck. And that's why I'm here, because without GM, we would never have access to vehicles like this. So they took it from idea to a, a mobility platform in nine months. So they did a great job for us. Uh, we did ask them to enhance the mobility of the, the vehicle platform so that it meets the expectations of a military user. So uh, the, it has larger tires, it has greater wheel travel, it has uh, uh, heavier suspension, uh, slight modification to the frame to take the, uh, the additional loads. Uh, but other than that, the uh, design and the, uh, the innovation came from General Motors with its powertrain, advanced powertrain. And then the style and detail, it's, it's a great looking studio. vehicle. Yep. You get to drive it? Are you going to get it? I, I, I will get to drive it, yeah. yeah. There's no doubt I will get to drive it. Now, obviously, it's not up armored, so it's not in a combat role. Is Correct. that something that you'll be looking at, though, the possibility? That's, that's something our engineers, as we, uh, they provided the data, the drawings, yeah. the, the detail to us. Our engineers are working uh, in parallel to look at the militarization of this platform. You know, General Motors' principal interest is commercial applications, and uh, they have an off-road market that, that uh, they are interested in engaging with a platform like this. The question I've been asking myself throughout this entire report is, are hydrogen hybrid fuel cell trucks the future? Of course, this offers a lot of advantages to a traditional diesel engine. It's quiet, it doesn't produce pollution, and it can generate quite a bit of power. But I think it's also very expensive, and perhaps not yet ready for prime time. How many miles or hours is this good for as a power source? The, um, as we move into Gen 2, we're going to be at about 8,500 hours of operation, which is equivalent to um, 150,000 miles of, of real-world driving. This one's around half of that. Power is always a concern, um, whether it's on the vehicle for like a silent watch type mission. Um, they have a lot of radios to power up, um, communications equipment, uh, weapon systems. Um, so there's always an increasing demand for electrical power on vehicles. So it's great for that. It has uh, excellent idle performance. Um, whereas a traditional diesel engine, you're gonna be using, not quite uh, running it at an efficient point to generate power, to turn the alternators, to charge up your batteries for silent watch. Whereas 
us it's a, a very linear progression um, with the fuel usage. Um, now in terms of statically um, as well, like at an operating base, you know, we could actually go to an operating base, have them turn off their generators, plug in this vehicle, and then we can export you know, roughly 25 to 50 kilowatts peak of power to power hospitals, uh, operating base, uh, numerous, numerous things. Will we see this technology in a truck that you'll be driving in the near future? Probably not in the near future because the Army looks out 30 years, so we're probably looking out more like 10, maybe even 20 years, but it certainly is fascinating technology, and hopefully, if the stars align, we'll go visit this truck once the Army has it in the field and take it for a drive. Yeah, we, we do look 30 years out. Um, I think the uh, auto industry is on a much shorter timeline. I think you could potentially, four years, right? So I think we are going to be following them and following their lead and taking advantage of what they learn and their body of knowledge as we explore where this fits in. And I could, I could envision that there will be specific mission areas where this makes a great deal of sense, maybe some niche applications initially, but as the technology continues to emerge and evolve and we learn more, it could expand out and become a, a primary powertrain for tactical vehicles as we go forward. But it's still, we're at the beginning stages of understanding its full potential. Right. One last question. Once you drive it, can I call you and ask you how it drives? Absolutely. Well, I'll about, even better, after I drive it, we'll call you, you come and drive it with us. All right, How's thank it? you very much. Okay. Really appreciate Great. it. Thank, thank you. you for your time. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fastlane Truck. Check out tfltruck.com for more news, views, and of course, hydrogen hybrid fuel cell truck reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.